Hello friends, welcome to arpitakarva.com, India's finest online coaching for English literature. Today we will be covering detailed summary of Paradise Lost, the most famous epic poem by John Milton. मतलब आप देखो एक पूरा चैप्टर हमने डेडिकेट किया है जस्ट फॉर दिस पोएम सो इट इज राधर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सो लेट्स नॉट वेस्ट एनी मोर टाइम एंड डिस्कस द इंट्रोडक्शन टू पैराडाइज लॉस्ट इट्स एन एपिक पोएम एंड वी विल नॉट बी डूइंग अ लाइन बाय लाइन एनालिसिस ऑफ द पोएम बिकॉज इट्स वेरी लॉन्ग हाउ एवर आई विल डिस्क्राइब इट इन सच अ वे दैट यू विल अंडरस्टैंड इट कॉम्प्रीहेंसिवली सो लेट्स बिगिन But before we begin, let us learn some basic facts about this work. This poem was written in a blank verse by Milton, and the first version was published in 1667, and it consisted of ten books. While the second edition was published in 1674, it was arranged into twelve books. So, as you all must be thinking now, we are going to discuss all the twelve books, but in a manner that will be very simple and interesting. So let's begin with book one, where Milton begins with asking a deity, a god, a spirit, or particularly a muse for help. He was calling out to the muse because he believed that the muse will help him write better poetry. And secondly, many poets have been following this practice of talking to the muse. Now you all must be very curious. What does he want from the muse? Milton wants the muse to sing and tell about man's first disobedience. Now you are curious again why he wants to shame us humans by telling us about our acts of disobedience, but Milton explains that his goal through this work is to justify the many ways of God to men. He wants to talk about man's disobedience towards God and the result of that disobedience. What disobedience and how you will understand as we move further. Now, the first book opens at the time when God threw out rebel angels from heaven into hell. The opening scene is of hell and describes Satan and his trustworthy friends Beelzebub who has just been thrown out. Why were they thrown out? We will know the back story in book number 5. To abhi book 1 ki baat karte hain when it opens we find that Satan and Beelzebub were both lying in a fiery lake in a fiery lake where they discussed if they should take badla or revenge on God. While Beelzebub says that they cannot defeat God. Satan says that he is confident that he can defeat God. So Satan further utters the most famous lines to Beelzebub, which is, "The mind is its own place, and in itself can make a heaven of hell, a hell of heaven." Now, after saying this, Satan tries to make the best of his situation in hell. According to him, it is better to rule hell than to serve in heaven. Now, when he has fully made up his mind, he asks an army of fallen angels to get up. They all start to dig the ground and find gold and many other minerals. They further build a temple, which is known as Pandemonium, which will now be Satan's throne and a meeting place. So, if someone has watched the series uh, Lucifer on Netflix, you will be well aware of this throne. Now, what does this throne building tell us? It is an example of the many ways Satan and his followers try to copy the glory of heaven in hell. Now, there are some very important facts that you must remember about Paradise Lost. Book one, it's a very interesting fact that the opening sixteen lines of Paradise Lost comprise only one sentence. Can you imagine that? Nevertheless, another important line in the book says that glory never shall his wrath. or might extort from me here glory refers to the courage that we should never submit or yield matlab jhuko mat moving on to book 2 now friends where the hell gang was plotting to get revenge against god by war or through tricks now we have belial an evil spirit who says that if the fallen angels don't trouble and anger god he will free them of their punishment Hence, according to Belial, there should not be any kind of war, whether open or hidden or concealed. किसी भी तरह की वार नहीं होनी चाहिए. However, once Belial finishes his talk, Molok says that it doesn't make any sense to worship someone you hate. Hence, he suggests that they should keep living in hell, free and to none accountable, preferring hard liberty before the easy yoke of servile pomp. तो कहने कि हम हेल में ही ठीक हैं, at least free तो हैं. वहाँ पे लिबर्टी है लेकिन काफ़ी हार्ड वर्क है सो इट्स बेटर दैट वी स्टे हियर बट एट दिस पॉइंट बी एल जिबाब इंटरप्ट एंड सेज दैट मोलोक इज रॉन्ग ही सेज दैट गॉड विल स्टिल रूल दैम इन हेल्थ 
तो वो कहता है कि ऐसा कुछ नहीं है चाहे हेवन में रहो या हेल में रहो बोथ द केसेज गॉड इज गोइंग टू रूल दस ना वॉट द फॉलन एंजल्स कैन प्रॉब्ली डू टू एंग गॉड बी एल जी बाब सजेस्ट दैट अटैकिंग द कॉमन मॉडल मैन हो ही थिंक्स इज लेस इन पावर बट मोर फेवर्ड बाई गॉड मच डिबेट द फॉलन एंजल्स फ्रॉम हेल डिसाइड टू डैमेज द न्यू वर्ल्ड दैट गॉड हैज क्रिएटेड विच इज कॉल अर्थ एंड सड्यूज द मॉटल मैन गॉड हैज जस्ट क्रिएटेड बट दी ओनली प्रॉब्लम वॉज टू डिसाइड होम दे शुड सेंड दे ऑल यूनानिमसली चोज द लीडर एज सेटन so that satan starts his journey to earth and before leaving he meets his children sin and death at the gate of hell but as you know god is watching everything he sees satan reaching earth and predicts the fall of man however he also sees that his son jesus will sacrifice himself to save man now what to remember in book 1 while milton introduces satan and the fallen angels we find two chief devils to appear in book 2 known as Moloch and Belial moving on to book 3 so friends here milton again asks for the help of gods and goddesses to help him write because he is suffering from an illness the illness is blindness but you all must be curious what does this man seek now ab kya chahiye ise he again invokes the muse but this time addresses it to the holy light He asks the heavenly light to shine inside him and give him divine knowledge, so that he can further share this knowledge with his readers. Book three opens in heaven, and we see God pondering over the situation. We learn how Satan is trying to destroy man, and how God has predicted that man will fall easily. But why does man fall? God explains that He has made man in such a way that he is sufficient to have stood, but free to fall. which means that man himself chooses to do the right thing or the wrong thing god ne to banaya hai dono capability ke sath insaan ko sahi galat jo chune wo uski problem so now god's son was really worried about the predictions made by god about man's fall but god assures him that he will renew man's powers but generations of men will die until someone goes down on earth to help them and redeem them to he said ki main jo insaan ki powers hai unhe renew kar dunga बट काफ़ी जनरेशन्स मरेंगी उसके बाद कोई एक ऐसा जब जाएगा जो उनके लिए जाके मदद करेगा अर्थ पे जाके दैट्स वेन दिस थिंग्स विल हैपन सो वेल हेवन में से कोई वॉल्टियर नहीं करता इट्स फाइनली द सन ऑफ गॉड हु कम्स फॉरवर्ड एंड चूजेस टू सेव द मैन फ्रॉम द फॉल सो फ्रेंड्स दिस इज़ वॉट विल हैपन इन द फ्यूचर बट राइट नाउ लेट इज गेट बैक टू सेटन इन बुक टू वी सॉ दैट सेटन लेफ्ट हेल्प In book three, Satan lands on Earth, but he gets distracted when he sees the gate of heaven from a distance. He climbs up a few step, but he is again distracted by the sun and flies over it. However, at the sun, he sees an angel standing named Uriel. But he also knows that if he goes up just like this, his plans will be known to everyone and they'll be destroyed. So, what does he do? He changes form and becomes an innocent-looking cherub. which you can think as a little angel so he then asks for the directions to paradise while uriel is tricked by satan's new form he shows satan the way to paradise now friends moving to the next book number 4 book number 4 may satan enters paradise there he finds adam and eve god's first humans then satan becomes jealous of their happiness He hears Adam telling Eve that they should not eat the fruit from the forbidden tree of knowledge. Meanwhile, Uriel, the angel we just talked about, warns Gabriel and the other angels that one of the fallen angels has entered paradise. They all get into detective mode and soon Satan is caught in the shape of a little frog or toad trying to whisper to Eve in her sleep. But after this discovery, he is thrown out of Eden, the paradise garden. Then we have the book number five, where Adam and Eve wake up from their sleep, and Eve tells Adam about the disturbing dream she had. She tells that in her dream she saw an angel who offered her fruit from the tree of knowledge, and also promised her that she could become a goddess if she ate from it. But Adam tells Eve to not overthink, as it was just a dream. Isse bhool bhaal jao bhai. 
they both go off to work in the fields, starting their day with prayers. Now God, who was seeing everything, sends Raphael, another angel, to warn Adam and Eve about Satan and also remind them that they can choose whatever they want to, but it will eventually determine their fate. So, do it and think it. And finally, Adam and Raphael meet and Adam keeps on asking the angel Raphael about heaven. But he says that he does not know of anything except earth. But Adam keeps on requesting. So eventually, Raphael tells Adam and Eve in detail the story of the great war between God and bad angels. And he also tells that Satan, also whose name is Lucifer, was the most beautiful angel of heaven. But he became then jealous of the son of God and led a war against God. However, within the fallen angels, there was an angel known Abdiel who stopped his allegiance to Satan and told the fallen angels that they would be defeated one day. Hence, he protested and left the followers of Satan. He was welcomed back into the ranks of God and was forgiven by God for his loyalty, obedience and resistance to evil. Moving on to the sixth book, my friends, it is merely an extension of the angelic or great war Raphael mentioned about in the previous book. So what we get to learn is that in the angelic war, Satan's followers fought the battle with the faithful angels for three whole days. But as the war entered the third day, God sent a Messiah. Now I'm sure you all must be knowing who this Messiah could be. Remember God's son who came forward to volunteer and save man from the fall? Yes, you are right, my dear friends. God's son Jesus rides in his flaming chariot as the Messiah and drives out all the rebels from heaven and sends them down to hell. Now you must do a quick exercise and reconnect what all we have seen till now because now the poem again shifts back to Adam's story in the next book. So in this book number seven, friends, Adam out of curiosity asks Raphael how heaven and earth first started and also asks as to why Eden was created. Now, here it gets very interesting when Raphael tells the story of creation. According to the tale, on the first and second days, God created heaven, earth, light, day and night. And on the third day, dry land was created on earth and mountains emerged. Further, seas were created and grass and fruit yielding trees appeared. The fourth day, however, features the creation of the sun, moon and stars. On the fifth day, reptiles were generated in the waters and fowl in the air. On the sixth day, uh, the creation of cattle, creeping things such as bees, bees and most interestingly, the serpent that was not harmful but obedient. Satvidin, God took rest and that's why we have seven days in a week. Or jo God rest day tha, wo hamara bhi rest day hai and it's known as Sunday. So after all this, man was formed to govern over all and in the end, woman was formed from man. But just when you think Adam's questions would end, he keeps going on, which we shall see in the next book. Now friends, uh, let's talk about book 8 where Adam asks Raphael some rather difficult questions, such as about the movements of planets in the universe. Though Raphael does answer Adam's questions, he insists that Adam should rather focus on earthly knowledge or heavenly knowledge. And finally, after so many questions, Adam is finally satisfied and he takes us back into his own history. Now listen carefully. When Adam first came down, he woke up in sweat and looked here and there and asked how he came there. As an answer, he had a dream where someone commanded him that he will be the first father of a man. But as we all saw how curious Adam was, he again asks whether he will have to live alone. To that, God replied that there are a lot of beasts down there and he wouldn't feel alone. But to this, Adam argues that all other beasts are less powerful and are rather inferior. What he wants is someone equal. So finally, God accepts his request and Adam narrates how God made him fall asleep and used one of his ribs to make a woman. We all know who on the Eve. However, do remember Adam in this book number 8 also tells Raphael that Eve is also one of his chief flaws and weaknesses. Now, after hearing the entire story, Raphael finally leaves Adam. But while going away, he reminds Adam that he was free will to avoid any temptation. Adam then thanks Raphael for the visit in return. Now friends, let's talk about book 9 and I hope you remember how Satan was thrown out of Eden but after being gone for many days, 
Satan decides to make a return. For this, he changes his form into a serpent. Next morning, when Adam and Eve wake up for their gardening work, they have a small argument when Eve suggests that they both should go in separate directions to work. After much argument, Adam finally agrees. It is then when Satan, as a serpent, finds Eve alone and approaches her. For those who are still wondering what a serpent is, it's nothing but a large snake. So now Eve gets very surprised to see that the snake can speak and she is soon induced by him to eat the fruit from the forbidden tree. When Adam gets to know about what Eve has done, he gets horrified about the consequences but at the end he decides that he will be her partner and share her fate. Hence, Adam also eats the fruit. So referring to this event, Milton writes that Adam was overcome with female charm and so he ate the forbidden fruit against his better knowledge. Kehne ka matlab hai ki wo eventually uh, aurat ke chakkar mein pad gaya aur apni dimaag ka istemal usne nahi kiya. So after eating the fruit, both Adam and Eve are aroused with lust and they lay together and then fall to restless sleep. Soon after they wake up with shame, finding themselves naked. They cover themselves with leaves and in such emotional chaos, they both start blaming each other for all that has happened. Now the above incident has been referred to by Milton in the book 9 as fall of man in two stages. Now we will talk about the next book that is book number 10. And you all must be well aware time and again the above books have hinted that choices made will have consequences. Hence after the above incident by Adam and Eve, Christ who is the son of God comes into picture. He sentences the snake or serpent with a curse that it will forever remain a hated enemy of mankind. Secondly, Lord Christ also announces the punishment for Eve. According to the punishment, Eve's pain will increase as she would have to bear children and will forever remain the servant of Adam. So you can say somewhere Eve is responsible for all our pains. All women out there, hum Eve ko blame kar sakte hain. And uh, Adam ko bhi nahi baksha gaya. He was also punished and according to the punishment, uh, Lord Christ said Adam would eat bread only by toiling and sweating. This was his curse. But more importantly, Adam lost God's grace forever. So in short, uh, as a man, he would have to go out, mehnat karni padegi, rozi roti kamani padegi. Now as Christ announced the punishment, death and sin, they left the gates of hell and joined their father, Satan on earth. Hence, Satan sent sin and death as his ambassadors on earth, while he himself went back to hell to see if his followers had all become snakes. While all this happened, God also made many changes on earth. He replaced the season of eternal spring with changing seasons and created violent storms, winds, hail, ice, floods and earthquakes. And finally, the punishment which you all must be expecting by now. God sentenced Adam and Eve expulsion from Eden. So, uh, Satan vapis hell chala gaya to see ki uske jo followers hain wo snakes bane hain ki nahi aur god ne earth mein aur changes kare aur aur khatarnak cheeze introduce ki varna eternally wahan spring rehti thi but ab har tarah ke seasons floods earth ko ek sab aane lage aur adam aur eve ko eden se nikal diya gaya now we will move to book 11 my friends in which god sends michael and his group to make the sinning pair of adam and eve leave paradise but before this happens, God commanded Michael to tell Adam everything about what will happen in the future due to his sin. So, he Michael to Michael, God, that you can see Adam and Eve ko zara bahar ka rasta in paradise. Se, aur unhe ye bhi hai ki what will future in the future sin. Ki se. So now friends, as the angel Michael comes down to Eden and tells the news of expulsion to Adam and Eve, listening to their punishment, Eve breaks down in tears. However, Michael and Adam go to a hill where Michael tells him everything that shall happen in the future till the great flood. Michael even shows him a scene where there were two men offering sacrifices. However, one man kills the other by hitting a stone. So Adam gets very confused by seeing the scene. But Michael explains that these men are Cain and Abel who will be your and Eve's first sons. Adam gets horrified. But Michael explains that man will die from violence and diseases in the future. Listening to what is waiting in the future, Adam also starts crying. But Michael explains that all this can be avoided by controlling what one eats and drinks. Now, you can see how futuristic and how much knowledge 
बेसिकली खान पान का ध्यान रखो और अपना ख्याल रखो सो यू विल बी गुड दिस इज वॉट वी ऑल आर ट्राइंग टू अचीव इवन टूडे चलिए बात करते हैं अब बुक ट्वेल्थ की सो दिस बुक फोकस्ड ऑन लॉर्ड जीसस कंटिन्यूइंग विद इज एक्सप्लेनेशन इन द प्रीवियस बुक माइकल एक्सप्लेन्स दैट इन लेटर फ्यूचर Israelites that is the people of Israel will become more and more sinful until Jesus appears however michael says that jesus will be crucified but he will be resurrected within 3 days resurrection kya hai my friends it's bringing back someone to life so after the resurrection of jesus he will leave for heaven but he will have a second coming to earth so when he comes back he will reward the good and punish the bad on judgment day so after hearing everything adam is satisfied with the knowledge michael asks him to keep faith and he will have an inner paradise happier than paradise both michael and adam walk down the hill and soon after a flaming sword is placed to block the gates of eden as adam and eve are sent away from paradise so as adam and eve leave paradise hand in hand with wandering steps and slow they are comforted by their full knowledge of the coming of christ as redeemer of mankind iska kya matlab hai that christ will be insaniyat ka masiha and that's how paradise lost ends pretty big story right abhi khatam nahi hui hai kahani uh, let's now discuss uh, another important part of our discussion which is critical analysis john dryden adapted paradise lost for a stage work named the state of innocence published in 1671 for this he sought and received milton's permission to put paradise lost into a rhyme by the early 18th century paradise lost gained much attention joseph addison published a series of essays in the spectator which was published in 1712 so in this work he ranked milton's epic with the works of classical antiquity Next we have uh, Alexander Pope who borrowed heavily from the imagery of Milton's poem and his own work The Rape of the Lock constructed a mock epic that essentially became a parody of Paradise Lost. However, Milton's reputation also suffered because of Samuel Johnson who was critical of Milton. Though Johnson praised the greatness of Paradise Lost, he did not like the use of images from nature by Milton. Then we have William Blake who famously wrote the reason Milton wrote in fetters when he wrote of angels and god and at liberty when of devils and hell is because he was a true poet and of the devil's party without knowing it now what does this mean according to blake milton's depiction of god was so inferior to that of satan that he considered milton to be satanist himself so this my dear friends is one harsh criticism matlab usko satan hi bata diya bole tumne chalo satan ki burai kari lekin god ki utni बढ़ाई नहीं करी उतनी तारीफ नहीं करी तो तुम भी एक तरीके से सेट नहीं हो देन माई फ्रेंड्स वी हैव शलीस प्रोमीथियस इन प्रोमीथियस अनबाउंड इट्स मॉडल्ड आफ्टर मिल्टन सेटन एंड दिस यू शुड रिमेंबर शेली ऑल्सो रोड दैट मिल्टन एलिज नो सुपीरियरिटी ऑफ मॉरल वैल्यू टू इज गॉड ओवर इज डेविल However despite the criticism it must be noted that in Paradise Lost Milton was not only justifying God's ways to humans in general but he was justifying his ways to the English people between 1640 and 1660 with his work he wanted to tell that the people of England had failed to establish a good society by deposing the king and also question why they had welcomed back the monarchy So according to him just like Adam and Eve people had failed due to their own weaknesses their own lack of faith their own passions and greed their own sin hence god was not to be blamed for the trials and corruptions that happened in england during the times of oliver cromwell and another interesting work that was inspired from paradise lost was milton's god written by william empson in 1961 empson concluded after an idiosyncratic and spirited demolition of god's motives and actions that the reason why the poem is so good is that it makes god so bad stanley fish published surprised by sin subtitle the reader in paradise lost in which he tried to bridge the opposing views by arguing that the true hero of the poem is in fact the reader now since we have talked about paradise lost let's talk about paradise lost sequel written by milton it is called paradise regained 
ऑब्वियसली सीक्वल है पैराडाइज खो गया मिल गया सो so लॉस्ट का उल्टा रीगेंड सो दैट्स हाउ यू रिमेंबर द सेकेंड सीक्वेंस मतलब पार्ट टू सो वन ऑफ मिल्टन फ्रेंड्स थॉमस एलवुड रेड पैराडाइज लॉस्ट एंड ही टोल्ड मिल्टन हे फ्रेंड यू हैव टॉक्ट अबाउट पैराडाइज लॉस्ट बट वॉट अबाउट पैराडाइज बींग रीगेंड हेंस एज अ रिस्पॉन्स मिल्टन रोड पैराडाइज रीगेन which was a series of debates between Christ and Satan. So this work was made up of four books and was published along with another work of Milton titled Samson Agonistes. So jaise do se nahi chhed dete hain chatune ye to likh diya ab iska bhi bata to aise karke jawab diya tha uh, Milton ne apne friend Thomas Elwood ko aur Paradise Regained likha tha. Ab chapter khatam hua hai. So that's it from my side for this lecture. We will soon meet in the next lecture and till the time we meet next happy learning keep loving literature and stay tuned to arpitakarwa.com